So we had a bit of a challenge there, and I went back to the exec and I presented the findings, and we had a very stark choice. We could either carry on faffing, and carry, as, as I like to say, carry on sort of tweaking at the edges, doing a few programs, or we could do something really meaningful, because we always say you don't get diversity without an inclusive culture. To us, the inclusive culture was basically everyday behaviors. What were we going to do about this? And I say this again, we are a wonderful organization. But this was stuff that was just there, and, and frankly, that you'd either put up with it or, or you'd just gone. And either way, it wasn't where we wanted to be. So rather than go streaming into something like unconscious bias training, I'm sure it has a place, it's not what we wanted to do, um, we actually decided leaders are accountable for their own behaviors, and we are going to be really clear about what the, those behaviors were. So we started at the top. We produced our Ask Yourself film which is out there for anyone can, can see it, it's pretty amazing. And that film was produced to give a clear message. And then we actually used that film as in the session. So we had mandatory sessions for all our partners to start with, groups of 20, with your peers, and you'd sit in the room, you'd walk into the room, if you were late, you weren't allowed in, because it was disrespectful. And for us, this was all about respect. We rephrased it, we pushed diversity to one side, and we said this is about respect and inclusion and you frankly will not get inclusion unless you get respect, mutual respect for each other. And then, so people would walk into the room, a white male facil facilitator, I'm afraid, deliberately chosen, because that was the majority that they were talking to. And I wanted people to actually listen. I think people were thinking they were going into an unconscious bias session where they were going to be lectured on stereotyping and all these things, and no, it was very different. And so they walk in, they sit down, they play our wonderful film. And then the facilitator would say, right, now let's hear what it really, people really think about working here, shall we? And we played them a number of really hard-hitting stories that we had anonymized to protect the people that had been good enough to give them to us. And one of those stories was mine. And I was very happy for it to be used. And then they sit there. Those go on for 15 minutes. There is nowhere to look. There's no screen. There's nothing. You have to look at the floor, look at your colleagues, look at wherever you want, but you've got to listen. And then the facilitator simply says, how do you feel? This is your firm. You lead it. You own it. It's your firm. How does this make you feel? And then for, a hundred, uh, for, for an hour and 40 minutes, there has to be a discussion. And they were extraordinary. And there were people that didn't realize those behaviors were frankly offensive. There were people that did and thought it was okay. There was a real movement to call it out. So we cascaded those sessions all the way down through the organization. We did 6,000 people. We put through them in a very short period of time. It cost us nothing. So for anybody that says, you've got a big budget, believe me, we don't. We're like other organizations. So we do sort of beg, steal, and borrow. And it literally, it was meeting rooms. That was it.